In honor of African American History Month, I wanted to highlight the career of Tom Wilson, a producer greatly influenced, who greatly influenced the sounds in the 1960s. Simon and Mark Garfunkel's first big hit, The Sound of Silence, established him as major stars in 1965. It didn't, however, start out that way. The song was originally a Paul Simon composition written in late 1963 and originally released on the 1964 debut album, Wednesday Morning, 3 a.m. Well, inspired by the 1960s folk boom, the album went nowhere commercially. Then the album's producer heard that college students were increasingly requesting to hear the sound of silence on radio stations. Later, possibly in response to the electrified folk sounds of the birds turn, 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 he decided that by adding drums, electric guitar, and bass, it could sell. By December of 1966, the song had reached number one. That producer's name was Tom Wilson. Thomas Blanchard Wilson, Jr.'s background may have been him the right man for that place and time. An African-American best known for working with white artists, he started out releasing avant-garde jazz acts. Born in Waco, Texas, he came from a comfortably middle-class family with deep connections to music. He first attended Fisk University in Tennessee, an historically black college. Eventually, he transferred to Harvard, where he studied economics and was head of the local Young Republicans. After graduating cum laude, he launched his own record label, Transition Records. Among his first signings were the trumpeter Donald Byrd, the, painter Cecil, sorry, the pianist Cecil Taylor, and the composer, bandleader, and all-around original, Sun Ra. Transition Records would make its mark in jazz history, but it folded, forcing Wilson to seek other opportunities. By 1963, he was working as a stack producer, staff producer for Columbia Records in New York. Although he produced a variety of acts, such as Terry Thornton and Pete Seeger, it, it was mostly his work with Bob Dylan, which is best known today. Taking over from the legendary Columbia A&R man and producer John Hammond, Tom Wilson began midway through Dylan's second album, The Free Willing Bob Dylan. This album, for many critics, launched uh, the classic period of Dylan's repertoire. By the time Dylan and Wilson reunited for the next album, The Times They Are A-Changing, Bob Dylan was an internationally known recording star. The two had worked together on two more full-length albums, Another Side of Bob Dylan and Bringing It All Back Home, released in 1964 and 1965. This recitation, however, understates the importance of this period in Dylan's career, which ranged from such classics as the title track of The Times They Are Changing to the wry and satirical subterranean homesick blues. Dylan transitioned them from an acoustically based folk singer to a popular songwriter and recording artist who employed electrified sounds of the mid-60s rock and roll to classic effect. And arguably the most famous example of this was their last collaboration together, Dylan's 1965 hit, Like a Rolling Stone. Released in 1965, Like a Rolling Stone was voted number one on Rolling Stone's 500 greatest songs of all time, hailed as possibly the most important song not only of Bob Dylan's career, but also the post-war pop music. It has been covered by artists ranging from Cher and Judy Collins to the Rolling Stones and Green Day. With its six minute length, brilliantly biting lyrics and amazing work, bluesy and folk sound, Like a Rolling Stone was unlike anything which appeared on popular radio up to that time. Dylan's lyrics and sustained delivery speak to a sneering anger about the song's subject, yet its ambiguous tone leaves one guessing as to how things will turn out. In addition to producing Like a Rolling Stone, Tom Wilson also played an unexpected key role in its instrumentation. He invited guitarist Al Cooper to the recording. Not content to just watch, Cooper slipped out of the control room to play with musicians, although by his own admission he made up his part on the Hammond organ. When the tape was played, Dylan insisted on turning up the organ. That part has become integral to the sound. In retrospect, one wonders if Tom Wilson knew all along that his innovation might bear fruit. Regardless, he arranged a great match. Al Cooper wound up playing organ on other Dylan tracks, including the next album, the legendary Blonde and Blonde. By early 1966, Tom Wilson had left Columbia Records to head A&R at Verve MGM. One of his first signings would be the very significant California-based progressive band, The Mothers of Invention, led by guitarist and chief organizer Frank Zappa. The band's debut album, Freak Out, would not only be released, it would be the second double album ever released in history. Although it was initially only a modest commercial success, Freak Out is acclaimed as a seminal cult album with such tracks as 
who are the Brain Police and the return of the Son of Monster Magnet, which rocks out at over 12 minutes and return, return reference to Susie Cream Cheese. Freak Out expanded the possibilities of avant-garde music. Should also mention, of course, Tom Wilson produced uh, the first album for the Velvet Underground back in 1967. Uh, it is sad when you think of such a tremendous artist, how so many uh, people have not remembered him. Meanwhile, we have to accept that the band Kiss and not Tom Wilson is enshrined in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Thank